Sometimes when we watch surveillance footage and badge cams, we gotta just recognize that sometimes we all make mistakes. I'm John Correa, the founder and owner here at Active Self Protection. Thank you for joining us for today's bonus badge cam lesson. It comes to us out of San Diego, California in the United States. Today's video is brought to us by the generosity of Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners. You win the fight and they will help you win the fight after the fight for the rest of your life. There's a link in the description for a coupon code for a discount for all active self-protection watchers. We're seeing surveillance footage here in the Sally Port at San Diego PD. The guy in the back of this cruiser has been arrested for threatening to stab several employees of a hotel. And so they put him in the back and what's gonna happen here is the officer who is actually a trainee, um, I know some folks in her department, and you know she's seeing this guy, okay, I gotta get him out of here. This is a place where they will book people before they then transport them to the jail. So she tries to get him out and recognizes the fact that he has actually slipped his handcuffs, uh, which happens on occasion. So she says, hey, this guy slipped his handcuffs. So you're gonna see the other officers start gloving up and going, oh boy, we're gonna have to get this guy out of this car and get him back into his cuffs. Now, what's gonna happen and what we're gonna see here is that the officer whose car this is has left his personal bag with his backup gun in it in the top layer of the back seat of his cruiser. That is against policy. There's a bottom layer that's secure, but in that top layer, they say you can't leave stuff like that because you know guys can break in. And this guy has actually reached in the back, put his hand through the plexiglass and gotten a hold of it. And this is what happens. They pull their guns because they see that he's gotten this bag and gotten the gun out of the bag. And because he's gotten that gun, of course, they all start drawing firearms. Now you're gonna see them get around here in a pretty significant way. Uh, when we hear the badge cams, we'll hear them start yelling at each other about crossfire and those things. And they're talking to this guy saying, hey man, we don't want to shoot you, but we will if we have to. And dude's just sitting in the back of the car. Again, he has taken an officer's backup gun that he got out of the back of the car by sticking his hand uh, through the plexiglass and bending it as far enough to be able to get what's back in there. And, and so they are really talking at him here and trying to get him to give it up and not make this any worse than it is. Now you're gonna see them all back up and go find some cover here. And they're really trying to play it cool. We got a lot to cover on this one still coming, but they're still hollering at him, trying to talk to one another and have told him many times that he needs to drop that gun and get it out of his hands and put his hands up so that they can take him back into custody. Now we're gonna go to the badge cam here of the, the uh, first officer. And what we're gonna see here is things get going from his perspective. Now, we do have audio here in a little while once things get a little bit sporty. So let's listen in to what the officer says here. And then once that is over, then we'll come back and keep thinking through this problem. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Hands. Let me see your hands right now. Let me see your hands. Look. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands right now. Let me see your fucking hands. Bro. See, he has your He has your He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Watch your crossfire. Let me see your hands. Bro, let me see your hands. Stop. We don't want to shoot you. Nobody wants to shoot you, bro. Let me see your hands. Let's back up. Let's back up. On the surveillance camera, you're gonna watch this guy actually take a shot through the roof of the cruiser there. We're gonna go back now to the badge cam. Uh, this is the trainee female officer badge cam. Got more audio, let's listen in. Now what we can see is the glass has actually been shot out of the back window and so our perp actually reaches around to the outside and pops the door and so then what you're gonna see here is him get out of there. Now we can see in the top there, we can see that there is one officer that's gotten out a patrol rifle and is pointing it at him and they're screaming and hollering at him to get on the ground and to not hold a gun. You can actually see he's got the gun in his waistband at this point and he has been hit, but not terminally, not in a way to stop him. So they're hollering at him because he's just got the gun in his waistband and not in his hand 
to get on the ground in those things. He's trying to get into the back of the cruiser, but he can't because it's locked. Um, and, and so the cruiser was appropriately locked. So again, couldn't get to the stuff underneath uh, of the secure area, but he's trying to get into that secure area because certainly there is an awful lot of deadly force stuff in there. He can't get in there. So what's going to happen is he's going to go try to get into the front of the cruiser. Well, of course, there is a patrol carbine and all that stuff. So when he starts doing that, he gets shot at three times by one of the officers that's off to the left of camera. And uh, he gets hit again, though not fatally, and put on the ground. Now this guy is the king of not paying attention to his surroundings and what's going on in his world. And so he is going to push himself up again. And you can see on the top left there, they're getting the, the canine ready for him. And he is going to try one more time to get himself up to get in this car. And, and you're going to see him as he pokes his head up here, he gets shot at again because they don't want him to get into that cruiser. And now what's going to happen is the dog is going to get released on him. And once again, we've got some more badge cam stuff I want you to listen in on the audio for. Hey, hey, get away from the vehicle! Show me your hands right now! Stop reaching his waist down! Stop reaching his waist down! Stop reaching right now! Stop reaching right now! Stop reaching right now! Get a dog up here! Get out of the car! He's coming in the car! Get out of 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 the Zoomed in here, you can see the uh, handgun that he's got in his waist there at that point. Uh, he did live through this, in fact. They took him to the hospital after they got him in custody. Uh, he's facing a whole host of new charges on this one. And there's been some disciplinary action with the officer in question who left his handgun in the unsecured area of the back of his cruiser. I think out of this one, we can say that there definitely were some mistakes that were made, but some good things that'll definitely come out of it. If you want to support the work we do here at Active Self Protection, one of the best ways you can do that is joining our patron member program. There's a link in the description. We do that all through our website. And I appreciate every single patron member supporting the work that we do and letting us invest the time to bring you these lessons. Let's talk about them. They're a bunch. Holy smokes, there's so much to talk about out of this one. Now, again, as this officer who is still in her FTO goes back there, this is just a sally port where they book people before they take them to the jail. So it's a very administrative action, guys in cuffs and whatever. And I think in a lot of ways, she did a pretty good job here. We're gonna talk about a few things that we can do a little bit better. Uh, pretty crazy situation all the way around. Now, as she's gonna get this guy and, and you know put some gloves on to get him out of the car, she sees he slipped his cuffs, does a really good job here of calling in help and getting the door shut again. Now, let's talk for a little bit, of course, about the fact that he left, uh, th that the officer left the uh, gun in an unsecured area that could be gotten by uh, somebody that's in the back of the car. Very difficult for him to do, but this is why we see they say, don't do that. And I know all trainees are taught not to do that. And that's bad juju. So don't get complacent, friends, when you're talking about your storage of your equipment, because that's bad things are going to happen. Now, there is some stuff that we want to talk about here. I do love the fact that the officer gets out his handheld light here. Of course, every police officer needs a very powerful handheld light. I suggest them for private citizens as well, because when you want to see things, that's the way to do that. I need to get some light in there so I can see things. So I want all the candela that I can possibly get to be able to see as much as I can. He did a fine job of that here. And now when he goes, oh, that guy's got a gun. Now, of course, everybody gets their gun out here. And notice that our officer starts to try to think about putting his light away. But then he goes, oh wait, I can't get it in my pocket because it'll make me take my eyes off this guy. So he's gonna stay single hand on the gun and uh, handheld light when he actually has a pistol mounted light on his pistol. Guys, I can't tell you enough. At times you just gotta drop what's in your hands. I know you don't wanna lose your light, but right now your life's at stake. 
drop the thing in your hand and get two hands on the gun, use the pistol mounted light. That's what you have it for. And yes, you need that right now. And if we, we got problems, they are gun problems. Now, of course, let's talk here real quick about the crossfire problem that we have just created, because I get it that these other two officers want to go around to a place that they can see the bad guy better. But you always got to think about crossfire problems when you got a partner. That's the same if you're in law enforcement or if you're a private citizen who has a self-defending partner or spouse or whatever, you got to think about crossfire problems. And they did a pretty okay job of communicating that to each other. Hey, everybody, watch the crossfire. Let's come over on this side and not do that. Notice the officer here is using the pistol mounted light uh, on the left side, pretty okay. Using it, spotting, moving, spotting, moving. That's pretty good here. And I think that's pretty commendable. Now, I also want you to notice our trainee here over on the right hand side. She is far back from everyone else and still has a gun up. Now, I can't see down her sights and I don't know where her firearm is pointed. But when we talk about priority of fire, when you've got a gun up like this, real easy for one of your compatriots to move in front of your muzzle at that second that you were going to fire. So either move forward or get your gun down so then that way you don't point a gun at one of your fellow officers. She does a good job there of dropping her muzzle, but when you're back behind the line, see how fast people can move here. You really wanna watch getting back behind somebody when you are in these kinds of situations. So we get again the crossfire problem here. The officer on the far left is in a big crossfire problem, though I think the trainee has put herself in a pretty good spot here to not be in the crossfire with somebody. I also wanna say, man, when you put bullets through glass, things are gonna do weird stuff, so you better watch out for that. Now we're gonna watch all of our officers back off here, and I think this is commendable. They give this guy every opportunity to not get shot. And by every opportunity, I mean literally every opportunity. You heard how much they talked to him and what was going on with that. And that's my next big thing. And I know we're having a big discussion in our nation right now about police presence and what the police are doing and should doing. This guy's absolutely somebody who's been threatening to, to knife a bunch of people at a hotel. So they needed to take him into custody. And, and again, this guy's already shown a manifested violent intent. Now he's stolen a cop's gun and he's got it in his hand. And the fact of the matter is this officer just did everything he could have using good verbal skills. Hey man, I don't wanna shoot you, put the gun down, don't raise that gun, show me what you're doing. Now again, you wanna use simple positive commands and I think the officer did an okay job of that and didn't get stuck in a verbal loop, said, hey man, I don't wanna shoot you, let's be okay here, we don't wanna go this way, buddy, why don't you show me your hands, show me your hands, put the gun down, so he's giving simple and positive commands. And I think this is exemplary of what we see in police work an awful lot in the US in reality. I know the negative examples stick out a lot, but I think the positive examples should set us out as well. And when an officer does a good job like that, I've given this guy literally every opportunity not to get shot before he ended up having to protect himself and everybody else around, I think that's good. Now, when the officer does back off here, I think he picked a good spot there by putting himself back in the back. Now, when the dude shoots at the officers, you, you put a shot at cops, you're gonna get shot and you should expect to get shot. Recognize how far this shot is that we are looking at here. The officer who went and shot back at them, we get a couple of shots back from this officer here, and there's at least about 30 feet between them. This is not your typical uh, self-defense distances. So make sure that your marksmanship skills are pretty significant here. Now, the officer's got his patrol car being out. Dude is getting out of the car. Now, there's something that I really wanna sit and think about for just a minute, is that this officer has a patrol car being up on this guy, and I, I think that in a lot of cases, some people are gonna say he should've shot him right there, but we always talk about, did he absolutely have to shoot him right there? Because dude had the gun in his waistband. And so again, this officer shows incredible restraint trying to get this guy back in custody without having to shoot him with the patrol car. And you put a, a, a rifle round in somebody, they, they were chances of surviving that very slim. So I think he showed incredible restraint because the guy didn't have the gun in his hand, so he didn't absolutely have to shoot him. It wasn't a must, and so he didn't. And I think that is incredibly admirable. Uh, again, I think these officers are showing incredible restraint in not using deadly force when they certainly could have. So when we talk about the can they, should they, must they paradigm, I think that that gets law enforcement as well as private citizens, and they are showing incredible restraint here. Of course, you wanna use force as a last resort, especially in America today, because you know it's gonna to lead to incredible scrutiny, could lead to the end of your career if you make even the tiniest bit of mistake here. So I think they did a fine job of that. Now, why would they then use deadly force again when this guy's trying to get in the car? Well, that's pretty simple here. As he tries to get his way into the car, why would the officer use force here when they didn't use force before? If this guy gets in this car, 
Number one, in the cab of that car where the officer is, they have probably a patrol carbine there or a patrol shotgun. So a, a gun is in there as well. This guy gets in that car, he then uses that car as a deadly force implement. He's a threat to the officers in the Sally Port and to the general public. So certainly Tennessee versus Connor here, they have every right to use deadly force and this is the time they have to because if he gets in the car, then they got real problems. The thing I do want to notice here is you notice it puts the guy down, but it didn't stop him again. Bullets are, do weird stuff when you put them through windshield glass or glass of any kind. So recognize that you may have to shoot more than you think you do through the glass because the glass is going to make it do crazy stuff. Now clearly this guy is completely off because he sees what's going on and is still going to try to get away. So when he starts playing peekaboo with that officer who was sitting in that spot and he's made the decision, if that guy tries to get in the car again, I'm going to shoot him. So he stops. And that's exactly what we see here. Now, I do also want to say we don't get to see the tactical puppers used very often. The canines, that when they show up, we don't see them on camera all that much. But the dog did a fantastic job here. I love the fact that the dog chose to bite on the right hand. And I'm not sure that, he's, that he, that was a purposeful thing, but it was a perfect thing because, of course, the guy's got the gun in his right waistband. And so when the dog gets a hold of his right arm, he can't really get to that gun, especially because the dog is shaking him around and those kinds of things. And that got this guy back in custody. It's amazing how many times a dog stops a fight in somebody because people don't want to get bit by the dog. So really ex excellent use in this instance of the police canine to end the threat. Now, a couple more things from our trainee here that I really want us to think about. That, that she's doing okay here, but notice how many times she's taking her hand off her gun. She's going one-handed here, two-handed. Now, I'm gonna, am I going to key my mic? What am I doing? What am I looking around? Now, I want to stop right here and recognize a couple things. That where she chose to put herself here, number one, she doesn't have any cover here. So if the guy ch uh, chooses to draw his firearm, she's got nothing standing between her and bullets. Number two, she's standing behind the officer with the patrol car. I mean, he doesn't know that she is there and therefore he could step left in a hurry and we could have a, a fratricide doing that. The answer to that is, is you wanna step forward and be on an even line with him if you can. So then that way they know you're there or at the very least step up to that place with them and then hand out, I'm right here next to you, don't go left. So then that way that, the, that officer knows better than to come that way. Notice she can't see the guy at any rate at this point. So when he goes down, what is she doing here? I want you to think about positioning and always think about improving your position, improving your control, improving your ability to control the situation. Now, I think that they both showed a pretty good, remarkable amount of restraint here. That's a really good thing. Last thing, notice here that the officer has one glove on. She was trying to get gloved up when all these things go down. I would recommend that my police officer friends do some shooting with their nitrile gloves on because it will change the feel a little bit of how the gun is in your hand. And you should not you know, be the first time you're doing that is when you're doing it for real. So I would do a little bit of shooting with your nitrile gloves on just so that you've got that feel for it. Now, again, she does an okay job there finally of stepping up. When the, when the dog gets on him. And that's a really good thing. And they got him together. But what I notice here is you notice there she finally comes up. And I do want to say this. I can't see her sights, but I do notice the officer with the patrol carbine has his sights depressed. So he is looking from a low ready position and looking over his sights to be able to see what's going on. I think that's a great thing. I think we should train more from the low ready rather than from gun up and sights on target because it's just as fast and you can see better and you're not pointing a gun at something that you don't want to shoot right now. So yes, there were some mistakes mistakes made here. I do think that, that all these officers did some very good things. There were some significant administrative mistakes made, but let's learn the tactical lessons as well about how chaotic these things can be, about putting ourselves in a good position. Hooray for the tactical pupper. And thankfully, no one was harmed in this one and everybody got out okay. But let's learn some lessons here about covering our ASP.